during the Middle and Late Permian, a time of heavy competition and tumultuous ecosystems, a group of synapsid predators boasting four legs and saber-like canines established dominance. These beasts were our ancient relatives, and eventually earned the name Gorgonopsids, in reference to the gorgons of Greek mythology. Among them was the Innostrancevia, the largest Gorgonopsid ever discovered. Innostrancevia was an oddly agile creature, despite its large size. It was actually a better runner than other Gorgonopsids, including those that were 3.3 times smaller than itself. This is even more impressive given its dense muscle packed frame which led to individuals weighing anywhere from 660 pounds 300 kilograms to possibly 1,000 pounds 454 kilograms. Innostrancevia's elongated humerus and femur suggest that it had proportionally longer limbs than others of its kind, this is what allowed it to be more swift than its relatives. This running aptitude likely made it more efficient at running down prey, able to cover longer distances as well as short distances faster than its relatives. Additionally, Innostrancevia had another deadly weapon for hunting, its saber-like canines, which were an iconic feature of any Gorgonopsid. Innostrancevia took this to another level, bearing massive canines on its upper jaw that were 15 centimeters 5.9 inches long and quite durable. While its bite force is not certain, it was likely weaker than that of other large Gorgonopsids due to its narrower and lighter skull. Despite lacking bone-crushing power, Innostrancevia was still a very active hunter and could have used its canines in various ways, as reflected by the numerous proposed killing methods. There are differing opinions regarding Innostrancevia's hunting techniques. Some believe that it pursued prey and attacked directly, using its teeth to quickly dispatch the victim by targeting soft, vulnerable areas like the neck or belly. Others suggest that it employed ambushes, attacking unsuspecting prey with a large bite before retreating and repeating the process until the animal died from blood loss and shock. This ambush and attack then retreat tactic is generally accepted as the more likely approach, as Innostrancevia's double-jointed jaw allowed it to open its mouth extremely wide and administer giant bites that could rip out considerable chunks of flesh. Recently, some experts propose that Innostrancevia actually used both strong arm and ambush tactics. In this new theory, it ran down and consumed smaller prey, while using surprise attacks for larger ones. This idea also fits with the fauna it coexisted with, such as the small Vaxosaurus and large armored Scutosaurus. Once prey was secured to kill through whatever means, Innostrancevia likely sheared meat off and swallowed it whole utilizing its razor-like teeth and molars, similar to how some theropod dinosaurs consumed meat. In addition, it is likely that Innostrancevia also engaged in fights with others of its kind using both its legs and teeth, battling for dominance, food, or potential mates. With its deadly saber teeth and imposing size, there is no doubt that Innostrancevia was the apex predator of its time ruling the Permian from roughly 259 to 252.3 million years ago. The Alexandri species reached up to 3 meters in length. In the 1930s, a new challenger emerged in the form of Verbigia, a South African Gorgonopsid with a gargantuan skull that could have possibly matched or outsized the Innostrancevia. However, the Innostrancevia was not one to back down from a challenge, as another species, the Innostrancevia latifrons was later discovered with a skull measuring 60 centimeters, making it the largest Gorgonopsid known to date. The paleontologists who discovered it realized it was a new species due to its lower, wider snout and fewer teeth compared to the holotype. During its reign, Innostrancevia was found primarily in the European portion of what is now Russia. The environment was harsh, consisting of hot deserts during the day and cold temperatures at night. Despite the harsh conditions, relief was found in rivers, streams, and shallow lakes, which were abundant and seasonally flooded and dried up. The plant life during this time consisted mainly of seed ferns, followed by conifers and ginkgos. It is unknown as to whether Innostrancevia had a layer of fur, was hairless, or even had scales for protection but some believe it had fur due to the temperature variations in its environment. If it did have fur, it would somewhat resemble a proto-saber-toothed cat with its long canines, 
although it was not a type of cat at all but rather a stem mammal, closer related to us than reptiles or birds. In any case, it would have been a frightening sight to other inhabitants of its environment, including carnivorous creatures such as Anatherapsidus and Pravoslivia, which were much smaller and posed no threat to the apex predator, Inostrancevia. Despite their unique adaptations, even the largest and deadliest Gorgonopsid could not withstand the forces of Mother Nature. At the end of the Permian period, Inostrancevia disappeared. It is unclear whether it perished during the Permian mass extinction event, also known as the Great Dying, or if it died out just before the event. If it did go extinct during the Great Dying, it would have succumbed to temperature fluctuations, acid rain, and wildfires caused by the Siberian traps, a massive volcanic feature believed to have triggered the extinction. Sadly, no Gorgonopsids survived the Permian extinction, and all have become mere relics of the past. If you enjoyed the video please like and subscribe for more. Have a good day everyone.